And you made a 93? Mm. Yeah, in in uh, Kampur in India, mm -hmm. against India. And uh, the uh, that was when I was starting to really concentrate a little bit more on my batting mm -hmm. and starting to play and, and then uh, and then they <coughs> and I I think I was on tour to we came to Australia in 80, 84, 85 when we played the West Indies. And that was the West Indies holding, Walsh, mm -hmm. Marshall, that group. And uh, and well, I think they had cleaned us up a couple of times. They were a little bit, you know, one days. And <laughs> I opened my mouth and said, I'm happy to open, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember for the first game I think I opened was in Sydney uh, in the one day. And we got a, we got 265 or something like that against them, I think. But I remember bloody Malcolm bowled me a ball. I, he bowled me a ball and I, I think I hit him for four. And the next one he bowled me a short one. I don't think I ever saw it. <laughs> And then I saw, the, and you could see the replays on the on the and the Sydney Stadium. And actually, the only reaction I saw was my hands going up, and the ball actually went between my hands and my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and God, that was load. I mean, watching the replay was frightening enough, you know. But oh, it it, it was absolute smoke. Yes. And uh, but I continued to open. I must have done okay. I opened again in Perth. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I batted number three in Perth actually, mm -hmm. because when when the first drop, when the opens got very quickly. I was sent in <laughs> to, to go and hold it together a little bit, <laughs> and uh, we got some runs and put on a bit of a partnership. Uh, uh, I think I batted with Amal Silver against the West Indies again there, and then uh, Amal got seventy or seventy odd. I got a thirty odd, and we put on a hundred runs for that mm. first wicket, and then I think everything folded once we lost a few wickets, but. Yeah. Then, so I opened quite a few games against West Indies. So when he went to India, and uh, and they wanted to play the extra extra bowler and uh, and and the batter, so they said, "Oh, Ravi can open, and that will give us that option." So I ended up opening, and I opened in that first Test match right. against uh, India and got a nine, got ninety three, and I probably should have very got a hundred. Actually, I was we. The light got bad towards the latter stages of the mm. day, and we lost a couple of quick wickets, so we opted to take the light option and go away. We came back the following morning. It rained the whole day the following day, so we didn't play. And when we came back on day three, it was quite overcast and quite humid, and they had the new ball, and Kapil bowled, and uh, he, I, sh I think I shouldered arms to him, and it hit me on the pad with the ball, because Kapil used to swing the ball quite mm -hmm. a long way. And I, I was given out LBW, but you know, would have been. I mean, once you shoulder arms to the ball coming yes, back yes. into you, I think you're done. You're going to be lucky to survive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, dusted. So that was that was as far as I got. And, yes. uh, yeah. And a couple well, you, you of, played uh, 50 or 60 uh, one days, mm. and you, your bowling average was much the same as your, your test average, and yeah. your, your batting average, not quite as good as your test average, yeah. but uh, for an all rounder, uh, it's quite some career you've had. Uh, yeah, I think in the one days I I probably batted a lot lower, yes, right in yeah. the bottom. So you never really got an opportunity. I think I I probably opened a couple of games and a few games in the one days, but I never really got any big score. I just got one fifty or something yeah. like that. But yeah, I think the bowling was more the priority at that stage, and mm. you know. And towards uh, the end of the eighties, so you've had almost a decade around the national yep uh, scene, uh, the international scene. You've decided to move to Australia. Yeah, uh, yeah. We had to. We had the residency in place. Mm -hmm. So, and the children were small, so the boys were small, and uh, we thought look, that was probably the right opportunity. There was not a lot of Test cricket at that time. Mm -hmm. Sri Lanka didn't play a lot of cricket because uh, we had the civil situation in Sri Lanka, you know, and and that didn't allow teams to come to Sri Lanka. So, all the cricket we played tend to be overseas. Mm -hmm. I think. In of the 22 days, I think I played about three or four in Sri Lanka, the rest okay. were all overseas, mm. you know. It, the, making the decision to come over at that time, you know, because the kids could grow up and you, you had to restart and do all this sort of thing, was yeah. easy. So that was a case of then so just saying, what do I do when I go to Australia? So he said, oh, if I can get a contract with the club with this thing. So I ended up at Preston because, right. uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I knew... Could, um, uh, Ramsey Ziegler, who's uh, close to the Sri Lanka team and all that sort of stuff, and he knew 
Richard Norris or Dick, uh, they call him, and uh, and so that's how I ended up at Preston. Yeah, how lucky I we Preston, were. I was lucky, I was bad. He, Ryan Paul Pillar was there, I knew Ryan, because Ryan and I played club cricket together in Sri Lanka and, okay. and went before he came, so that made it that much easier. Easier, yes. And... Uh, how lucky yeah. we were. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, yeah. oh, look I, I thoroughly enjoyed Preston. The end, yeah. I mean, Dick and, uh, and uh, David Robo was then secretary, I think, mm-hmm. of the club. You know, they, they were very, very accommodating, very friendly, so it was quite easy to get along with. And then the guys were good. Killer was captain. Mm-hmm. And we had a good group, Ronnie Brains and uh, Scotty was keeping wickets then. Yeah, Dale uh, Carpenter. Dale was yeah. bowling. Uh, so... And um, yeah. tell me about your first game. Games. Can you remember yeah. it? No, I can't. I can't remember the first game, but I've, I've probably been fairly nervous. I reckon. But <laughs> <laughs> in a new club, new this yeah. thing, you got to make an impression. Yeah, you got to do the right things. But I, what got me was because I was playing a lot of international cricket, first class cricket at that mm. time. I was coming in, and everything seemed slower. Mm-hmm. You know the bowling the wickets and all that sort of stuff and I remember for the, almost the whole of my first season getting caught at short extra cover all the time because I would bat, bat, bat you know mm-hmm. go gangbusters and then you know feel like I'm really comfortable and get caught, caught at short cover yeah. and, and things like that and, and then and when you're bowling also it, it bowling was not too much of a problem I what I worked out was that I needed to I think a bowled a length which was not quite a good club cricket length mm-hmm. because it was probably good for first class cricket that sort of stuff because the ball used to zip through mm-hmm. and you know the players would you, you see here you bowl that length you beat the bat yes. and that was it it only looked good you didn't yes. have a result for it <laughs> right so I, then I worked I think at the end of the, that first uh, season you sort of when you think about what I had to do and all that sort of stuff it it, it was probably good it, it helped in terms of trying to understand where I was going and when I came back the next season and then I knew I had to pull that you know that length yes. you know that probably full length further up yeah. to the back closer to the back mm, that sort of thing it, then it became a little bit more comfortable and understanding that sort of thing it was, you know yeah so you won the bowling average I think three of the next four years so you clearly had it under control yeah uh, <laughs> You were, uh, and there was a great side at that time. You, you yeah, we had a great group of guys. Yeah. You know, mm. I mean, everybody enjoyed each other's company. Everybody enjoyed the cricket. Yeah. And we had uh, a lot of good success. stuff. Yeah, a lot of, lot of success. And mm. I, I think we had a level of strong confidence in, in mm. our ability and self. And it was good also bowling with you know Dale and uh, because Dale would bowl like around ten cent coin sort of thing. Yes. And he just put it there and there about. So you you could go about what you had to do at your end without a problem. Then we had some young fellows, Ashley Rob, Robinson, Rob, the young fellow, he, he bowled reasonable pace. And then mm-hmm. we had another young boy, I think he went to Northcote as well, to uh, I think I was, I got injured and I didn't bowl as much, but he right. bowled and he, uh, he had fairly good, bowled a nifty pace, can't quite remember his name. No, it was right. This thing. And uh, yeah, so we had, we always had a reasonable side and and the guys and Ronnie would come and you know bowl his darts, darts, <laughs> <laughs> spin, and uh, keep keep it going. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, you batted very well. Uh, yeah, with uh, obviously uh, Rowett. And, um, yeah, Ronnie used to bat well. He used yeah. to be very assured. But yeah, I think I was more like going bang, bang, bang all mm. the time and these things. Yeah, I always found the wickets. It should be a little bit just a tad too slow, low. Yes you know, from my style, but, I, you know, and adapting to that made it a little bit difficult and, mm. yeah, at times, but, you know, you had, you had to, listen. I think right throughout playing subbies, I, I always found that I, I, because I was a, played a taller style of game, I prefer the ball coming to me and bouncing mm-hmm. a little bit more than, yeah. you know, yeah, waiting for it, waiting for it and mm. waiting, which is the more disciplined way to play yeah. cricket yeah. than the way I was going about it. Yeah. So three championships in what four years I think yeah. yeah three and four the first one we lost yeah uh, which was we should never have lost I always say that we never should never have lost that was killer's year we we were chasing 120 against Caulfield I think mm-hmm. and we were going gangbusters I think and I was I think we went from 94 one or something to about 100 all <laughs> in a matter of a few minutes 
No, so that first year, that we should never have lost that fire. I, I, I mean, I, I got out, and then we bloody just went downhill. I think from there, you know, and I was flowing like I was. The thing is, you know, when I was in that flowing mood sort of thing, you just you, you, you just keep going, and then you play a shot you think you shouldn't have got it, but mm. you know you walk off thinking, oh, I think we got this in the bag. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, yeah, no, not quite, it's quite like that. You it's know? never over till never it's over. over. Till it's over. Yes. And then the next uh, two years. Next two years, we we won. I think we yeah. we were quite uh, sure of mm. what we want to do and winning it and making sure mm. it was happening. I think the uh, if I remember, I think the year we won the we, the year we won the championship. I think we bowled second, and I think I bowled more quite a lot of the last few overs and I think I felt a lot more comfortable <laughs> doing the bowling for that. I knew what I was doing and I was a lot of control and yeah. you know and I could I could close it up fa fairly shut it down quite easily, yes. you know, and yes. put, put transfer the pressure back onto the opposition quite mm. easily. So that uh, you know once we got there and we, we got into those positions I, I knew we, we sort of got it got it mm. fairly well closed. Yes. Yeah. Everyone I've spoken to about those sides uh, has sort of told me that they always believed they could win the game regardless of what was well, happening. Oh, yeah. We, oh, unbelievable. Yeah, I, I remember we played a game. I can't quite remember who it, who the opposition was. And I, I'm just wondering whether it was Elston Week or whether it was another southeastern side. And we didn't bat very well. We didn't bat very well. We batted... Um, I think we only ended up with about 130 or 100 and, uh, you know, very gettable score, 100, yes. 140 for a whole day, Jesus mm. Christ, 80 overs, you you would, you would think you'll win that, you, you lose that game, and we went, and Ryan and I were driving, Ryan used to pick me up and we used to drive and said, oh, we can win this, uh, go and Ryan said, oh, it'd be difficult, I said, ah, I said, we have to keep it tight as, right. <laughs> you know, and I remember we went into tea time, we went into tea time, and they only had about four 50 runs on the board, I think 50 or 55 for about uh, one wicket or something mm. like that, you know, so they had the whole, they still had the time and mm. and we and we had Siri who was in our side as well, so we, we did tell Siri, I said, you need to work on that ball a little bit, <laughs> right, so that we can get it to swing, right, and we came back after tea and we had the ball roughed up nicely on one side, we had it nice and shiny on the other side mm. and then we got it looping. Okay, <laughs> that was it. There was curtains after that. We were there was no way we were going to lose yeah. it from there. Yeah. And I remember going back when we were having a drink in the club after the boys in the office came. Right, can you teach us how to bowl river swing? <laughs> so I'm like, there's a lot of skill. <laughs> yes, a lot of skill. <laughs> yeah. So you had a few more successful years at Preston. Yeah. You played what, five or six seasons? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then the uh, old knee started to... Knee went, yep. Yeah, wear out. Yeah. yeah. No, it, I had, a, I had a, a big piece of floating board in my knee. Okay. You know, which I, I used to manage. I'll, it was always there. It never gave me trouble. And this time it just, it just crunched mm. the knee and it went through. So there was not much option but to have it operated after that and get that big chunk of bone out. But once... By the time I had done that, I had done so much damage to the knee that, right, you know, it was going to be very difficult mm. to come back and, uh, you know, bowl at the same level that I bowled before. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Um, tell me some of the uh, your your best memories of Preston. Uh, for me, I didn't, I, I enjoyed the time that we had. You know, we had a great group of guys, mm -hmm. and we used to we had a lot of fun on the field, and we used to be singing. And I, th I think we were. Because we were a side that was successful, we won. We were, you know, we could. Uh, we were sort of fairly assured that we would win most of the time. Mm. The uh, the funny thing was the year I think year we won. The one the champion the second year, Hobbs first year we won, and second year, I think we probably had a hangover left, and we came back, and I, I think we. We won one game till Christmas. Okay. And I think we may have lost all the others. And then between Christmas, between after Christmas, Jan, or the time it started, and March, I think we won every game and we killed them. Right. right? And 
I think I think we we won one outright. I, if I'm right, I think we won one outright, and we missed probably another another one or two where we probably were very close to winning outrights, mm -hmm. and we missed making the four as a result, right? Not by very much, yes, by just a couple of by a couple of points, but it hurt us that this thing and. I remember that when I actually did the analysis of my own performance with bowling, I reckon I had, I think I had four or five wickets in up to December, right? And I think I had 40 after that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Big turnaround. <laughs> yeah. But, it, you know, I don't know whether that had a lot of impact, but mm. it certainly showed why we didn't mm. get very far. And we, we missed it. That, so that year we missed it. But then we came back the year two. The, Two years after that, and we and we won one again. One again, mm. yeah. unbelievable. Um, let's talk about uh, post cricket. You, we won't talk too much uh, about. You went to Moorabbin and Mount Waverley for a little bit. But, yeah, uh, good clubs, but um, they can do their own interviews. If you yeah. know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you've you joined Amcor, and you've had yeah, 20, no, 25, years yeah, no, 25 years. Yeah, and I've been with them for a long time. Yeah, 25 years with Amcor. So I've been with them in the part of the sales team, various yeah. different different roles, different parts of the business. Yeah. So that's kept me going, still there. So hopefully finish up there another couple of years, two yeah. or three years, get me through. Uh, Golf has played a big part in your life. You're, yeah, you're I stopped, playing off yeah. a, uh, a lazy ten. Lazy ten, I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes up and down depending yeah. on how what the form is like. Yeah. Uh, they say. You yeah, know, golf has taken up. I've, I've really got engrossed and really tuned into it. Sometimes I think I probably should never play crash or play golf. Yeah. You know, uh, and it consumes a lot of my time now. And I practice a lot and train a lot and do all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I, I quite enjoy that. And because the knees are bad, I can I can get through that. I can walk. So mm. I, you know, the uh, and and my test is if I can play. Two or three days of go, you know, on a trot. Then I know that I can cope with the knees, but it won't be long that I'm going to have to do something on the knees. At some point, they're going to give me, I think. Yeah. So how the hell did you get talked into making a comeback with cricket? Ah, oh, look, we were just at dinner with some friends, yeah. and, the, and this veterans cricket come about. Right. You know, and the guy said, "Shall we play veterans cricket?" And I was, "Oh, yeah, we could be a good laugh. Let's, yeah. Yeah, let's try it and see." And, and the theory is that you don't have to train, you just turn up and you play and it's once every other week. Right, okay. <laughs> right. So you give it a go and see what happens. But, uh, Fantastic. And, and just a few friends that just, just playing, yeah. You've got a couple of boys? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, two boys now. I had three boys. I mean, my eldest boy passed away uh, when he was 19. And uh, the, uh, the other two... One played a little bit of cricket, the other one never was not interested. But the boys are grown up. They got, I mean, the elder one has got his own family now, and he, he does that. So, and my grandfather now, so he got a granddaughter. So wonderful. It's interesting. Yes. The younger one is, uh, is still at home, and uh, you know, and he's working. But they both seem to be. They're both fairly well settled down, and both, both working. So it's just uh, me and the wife. Wife likes the garden. Yes, and beautiful I, garden. Yeah, no. Mm. My job in the garden is cut the lawns. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time, I don't have time for that because I got to play golf or something like that. <laughs> now, just yeah. some quick questions. Yeah. Um, best player you've seen? Yeah, look, now I put them into a couple of different categories. The prettiest mm. player that I've, the prettiest players I would say would would have been Majid Khan. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was my second. Uh, it was played for Pakistan. I was mm -hmm. lucky enough to play the beautiful, absolutely, you yeah. know, number four, beautiful, beautiful stroke, absolute player. beautiful player, and made batting look like you know, mm. in, in, it's like you know watching Mark Quar and you having Majid Khan, Lawrence Rowe. David Gull all entwined in Mark mm. Waugh. That was the quality, you know, and mm. those are the type of players that mm. they were very pretty players. The most devastating player to me was Richards. Yes. He, you know, he, would, he, he, he could smash the ball, you know, this thing. The most difficult player to get out was, I think, Gavaska was hard. When right. Gavaska was wanted to bat, mm -hmm. he was hard work. When he didn't want to bat, he would throw it away. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But 
he, he just impregnable defence, absolutely fantastic, you know, mm. uh, and he played a lot of cricket like him. And the more, of course, Jeff Boycott was like that as well, yes. to a lot, you know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you played against some of the absolute legends of Test cricket. Yeah. Um, who did you not enjoy facing? Uh, obviously, a few of the West Indian lads. Yeah, um, look, yeah, you didn't, I, I didn't worry too much. I mean, you you manage against the pace. You, yeah. you can work out yourself against the pace. The guys who did a lot with the ball were the, were the ones with difficulty. Mm. I found Richard Hadley and Imran were difficult because mm. they moved the ball mm -hmm. such a lot. But the one that was most difficult to play against was Kadir. Mm -hmm. Abdul Khadir, he used to, you never knew whether he was playing, going legs, playing break or googly, <laughs> googly or what, you know. And, uh, or, the, or he bowled the flipper. Yes. And I, I remember in a test match, I think Karachi, he, he, I played and he bowled, he bowled to me. And I think I slog swept the first one. He went to mid wicket and dropped the next one short. I hit him over mid wicket. And the next one looked like it was dropping short till it took middle stuff with <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> a flipper. And, and then, you know, but he, he was, he was difficult. He mm. was difficult. And I think most people, he was difficult mm. to most people. Mm. Sort of thing, so, not unusual. But, you, yeah, the guys who did things with the ball were, were difficult. The hard ones. Yeah, the hard ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we've come to the end of our time, but yeah. we're definitely going to do this again because we've only just touched on your story, uh, Ravi, yeah. and there's a lot more to talk about and explore. Yeah, yeah. We hope we see you down the club at some point uh, during the course of the summer. Uh, yeah, no, I look forward to that. We yeah. uh, always want to see you there. To be with the boys. <laughs> so until then, thank you very much for your Thanks, time, yeah. cup of tea, yeah. the garden yeah. and the conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Sir.